I'm a big Christmas person. And when I say big, I, I take things to a whole nother level. Seriously, I bleed red and green. I grew up with Christmas being a huge deal. My whole family would come over to my grandmother's house in Texas and they really did Christmas up there. I remember me and my stepbrothers, we'd scour the whole house looking for presents and we searched every corner. And to this day at 36, I still can't figure out where they hid those presents. Hmm. But come Christmas morning, the whole living room would be full and the whole room would be lit up and we'd have dinner. It was nice. Hmm. To me, that's what Christmas is about. But when me and my son, my daughter, and my mom didn't have a place to stay, Christmas was the last thing on my mind. I remember we were staying in this rundown travel lodge and uh, we didn't have decorations or a tree. I didn't have any money for presents. To be honest, I just wanted the day to come and be gone. I didn't know what to do. So we did the only thing that I knew how to do. We went to a nearby park and barbecued. <laughs> I just thought that maybe it get our mind off of things and we could prepare dinner and just get out the hotel. There was nobody in the park but us and my son, he was too young to understand, but my daughter, and especially my daughter, Lord, she understood. Um, I didn't say much to her that day. I could barely look her in her face. She, it wasn't that she was so disappointed, you know, she was just confused and mad. She just couldn't understand why their Christmas was like this. And to be honest, I could barely believe it myself. Just a handful of years before, she had one of the best Christmases. She was like five and my son was a few months and she wanted this, um, I don't know if you remember, but my life size Barbie, she wanted one of those and we were driving everywhere searching for one, but we just could not find this damn doll. What's, what was screwing us up really was that we wanted a black one. And to be honest, Jasmine wouldn't have cared either way, but you know, we just, wanted her to have something that looked like her. But store after store, it was white Barbie after white Barbie. And I'm like, what's happening? Like where, who's buying all of these black my life size Barbies? Cause it sure as hell ain't none of these white people around here. And then after the fifth store, her dad finally said, could you please just call and double check? So I did. And the guy picked up the phone and he said, we have one more left. And I begged him to hold it, and I mean begged. So we drove all the way from Oakland to the Toys R Us in South San Francisco, and we finally got it, finally. <laughs> and um, the next morning we thought it'd be funny to hide the doll. Jasmine was opening up everything, like, oh, this is nice, oh, I really like this. And the whole time I knew she was really thinking, where is that doll that you guys said you would get me? Then after she opened her last present, she was like, oh, that's it? But with a big sigh and pout. So her dad asked her what's wrong and she was like, nothing. I just thought there was another gift on my list, but there's nothing else. And so we said, oh, we're so sorry. You know, they were out, we couldn't get one. And she held it together for about half a second and then she burst out into tears. I admit, I thought it was pretty funny. And then her dad pointed over to the corner where there was one more toy and he was like, what's that over there? And Jasmine runs over to the corner, rips open the gifts and freaks out. <laughs> she didn't want to play with any of the toys that we got her before. She took off the dress because she was the same size as a doll and she put it on 
And there she was in this pink and gold dress with this gold crown, dancing everywhere. And she was smiling and it was cute. But that day in the park, several years later, she was not smiling. She looked at me like she hated me. And then she said, Mom, you just need to call. 11 years old, she told me that. He'll do whatever you want. He'll give you money. Why are we living like this? Why are you putting us through this? It hadn't been that long since I moved my kids away from their father away from the abuse and the physical abuse had stopped but the mental and the emotional abuse it just kept going and when somebody has you mentally just about anything can tear down your self-esteem as a mom detaching from that relationship was my sacrifice what would stay and tell my children about me I looked my daughter in the eye and told her, you're a kid and you're a kid caught up in the middle of some adult stuff and I'm sorry that we're homeless and I'm sorry that we're going through all this, but I'm going to be better. I will. I'm going to be better. And she looked at me And her face didn't change. Because she didn't know what I know. That that was a promise that I was going to keep.